Welcome back to another episode of the Transfer Marketplace. In these videos, we have a look at the best defenders, midfielders, and forwards to buy based on the expected points for the upcoming game weeks. And in today's video, we're going to have a look at the best defenders, midfielders, and forwards to buy if you're planning on playing your wild card in game week 34 and for managers who don't have their wild card left which players should you be looking to bring into your team? We're trying to reach the goal of 2,000 subscribers before the end of the season. So if you're enjoying the content, please drop a like on the video and subscribe as well if you haven't already. It really helps the channel out. And let's see if we can get to our goal of 2,000 subscribers before the end of the season. Let's have a look first at the defenders to buy if you are planning on playing a wild card in game week 34. Now, despite the heavy defeat to Spurs, Newcastle's defense recently has been fairly good, and Matt Target might be the best route into that defense. He has some attacking upside as well. Newcastle's XGC of eight in the last six matches is better than United, it's better than West Ham, Brighton, and Wolves, and they've played the likes of Chelsea, Spurs, and West Ham in that time as well. Rafael Varane, he looks to be the best route into the Manchester United defence, which faces Everton in game week 32, and then has a double game week against Norwich and Liverpool in 33. Now, the fixture against Liverpool is difficult, and you're not confident of a clean sheet there, but certainly confident of a clean sheet at home to Norwich, and even away to Everton at Goodison, is a decent fixture for Manchester United. Cancelo and Rhys James both appear on this list, but... For managers looking to wildcard in game week 34, I think the more attacking play is to target defenders who have a double game week in game week 33 and know that you can get the likes of Cancelo and James on your wildcard in game week 34. For managers without a wildcard, the defenders to target changes considerably. Reese James is atop the list with the most expected points of all defenders from now until the end of the season. Chelsea double in game week 36 against Wolves and Leeds, and they will have another double game week in 37 as well. Cancelo and the Port, they also appear on this list, but there's little to separate the two in terms of expected points. And so managers may look to make a saving of around 1.2 million by going Laporte over Cancelo and making that saving. Robertson remains the third best option in that Liverpool team, whilst Doherty and Ben White from Arsenal are the best sub-5 million defenders in the game right now. Moving into midfield and managers planning on playing their wildcard in game week 34 should really be looking to bring in a Manchester United player for their double game week in 33. And Bruno Fernandes is the most appealing of all of their assets. That fixture at home to Norwich is the one that you will be targeting there. Playing Liverpool away is difficult, but the fixture with Norwich at home and even Everton before in game week 32, managers with the wild card may look to actually go to someone like a Bruno Fernandes or even a Jadon Sancho now in game week 32 for that fixture against Everton. Madison and Barnes, they also appear here, and they are great options ahead of their double game week in 33. They play Newcastle and Everton. So from an attacking point of view, two decent fixtures. Newcastle's defense has been okay recently, but certainly Everton's defense is one to target. Madison has the higher upside, but he is more rotation prone than Harvey Barnes. For managers without the wild card, you're looking to bring in midfielders with long-term pedigree. And you can see the expected points from game week 32 all the way through until the end of the season. Kevin De Bruyne has scored the fifth most FPL points of all players in the last six matches. And with Man City's favorable run home, including a double game week, could Kevin De Bruyne be an explosive differential and potential captaincy shout as well, as managers are starting to doubt the likes of Salah and may look elsewhere for captaincy. De Bruyne certainly has the pedigree as a premium midfielder. Wilfred Zaha, he reminded managers of what he can do in the fixture against Arsenal in game week 31. His expected goal involvement of 2.92 across the last four matches is equal to the likes of Son, Bruno Fernandes, and Salah. 
A large percentage of his expected goal involvement has come through penalties, but he is a great option at just 6.8. Coutinho, another name worth mentioning. He has back-to-back doubles in 36 and 37, with fixtures against Norwich and Burnley preceding those doubles. So if you're choosing to free hit in game week 33, when Aston Villa blank, holding on to your Aston Villa players like Luca Dean, and in particular Coutinho, could be a fantastic strategy. For managers wildcarding in game week 34, selling Kane for Ronaldo in game week 32 against Everton, or even in game week 33 for the double game week, could be a fantastic option. There is, of course, some risk in doing that. Kane has been fantastic recently, and you could probably say that Kane will outscore Ronaldo even though Kane has a single game week and Ronaldo has a double. But if you're thinking about captaincy in game week 33, Ronaldo with a double or Bruno Fernandes with a double are decent options as the captain shout when in game week 33, the captain options outside of the doubles, it's not very clear. So I think the Kane to Ronaldo move makes a lot of sense if you've got your wild card there in game week 34, if you want to go back to someone like a Harry Kane. For managers without the wild card, you don't want to be selling Harry Kane, but Jamie Vardy's fitness is worth keeping an eye on. Leicester's fixtures look fantastic to end of the season. They have multiple double game weeks as well. If Jamie Vardy can return to fitness, he could be a great option. And if he can't, maybe someone like Ian Nacho as well could be a decent option at a cut price value for Leicester. Calvert-Lewin, he may too become an option with Everton's double game weeks and the amount of fixtures that they still have remaining in the season. And Lacazette is a really interesting case for managers. An expected points total of 40 is quite strong, but is it worth 8.4 price tag, especially when you consider that downgrading a Lacazette to someone like a Watkins, a Veghorst, a Pookie, or even completely downgrading to a Gelhart or a Greenwood at just 4.5, that may allow you to reinvest the cash in your midfield to get guys like Coutinho, De Bruyne, Bruno Fernandes, or even a James Madison. So that is a big question for managers without the wild card. Is Lacazette worth holding, or is he better used as a cash cow to upgrade some of the other areas in your team? That's all for today's video. If you've enjoyed the content, please drop a like, subscribe as well if you haven't already. If you've got any specific transfer questions, drop them in the comments below. I will respond to each and every single one of them. But thanks so much for watching. Take care, and I'll see you in the next video.